talk broadhead penetration, mechanicals, and fixed blades. I want to discuss a little bit on broadhead penetrations of this is the three I have are hybrids and then I have one fixed blade. I don't have any straight true mechanicals. This is a Rage Extreme four blade broadhead. When the expandables are expanded out full force they're 2.3 plus inches according to Rage. They have a cut on contact head on them. Now we're also going to compare the thickness of the contact cut on contact heads, the thickness of the expandables on the three I have. The cut on contact head on the Rage is 0 .030 inches thick. The expandable blades are 0 .035 inches thick. And as all your Rage, most of them that have the expandables, they use a collar to lock them into place in flight. The next hybrid head is by Bloodsport. The cut area of the expandables are two and eight inch wide. The thickness of the cut on contact head is 0.047 inches thick. The thickness of the expandables are the same as the Rage, 0 0.030 inches thick. The last hybrid head I have is a fixed pandable head. The cutting area is 2 inches cut. The thickness of the cut on contact front blade is 0.046 inches thick and the expandables are 0.031 inches thick. The fixed blade head is a black hornet sear razor four bladed head. Same as all the hybrids, they were all four blades. The width of the cut is inch and a quarter. The thickness of the main blade head cut on contact is 0.059 inches thick. The little bleeder blades are 0.040 and they're three quarter inches wide comes out each side. Okay, where I'm going with this and what I want you to give some thought to is in expandable heads, Rage seems to be uh, along with the Schwackers, the heads that everybody wants to use in an expandable head. Like I said, this is a hybrid head. It does have the cut on contact head and then it has the expandables. But as we all know, when we're shooting our crossbows, is what this is pertaining to, but even a regular uh, compound bow, recurve bow, when you're shooting target and testing broadheads, most everybody shoots straight at the target. 
the way the rage head is as the cut on contact head enters the target or your animal when it comes in contact with the front part here it starts to expand those blades if you are using an expandable like this and your shot is quartering away on your animal as this head comes in and hits again I have the cut on contact cutting into the foam the expandables are the same way the foam is and the one on the left is partially open the one on the right is just about locked back but what happens is this blade is going to cause this arrow to be kicked when it hits the hair the skin the meat on that animal and it might kick the arrow over like such but you were actually shooting in at this angle and it's kicked over to this angle you get a lot of movement in the arrow as these expandables open so yeah everybody says about how big of uh, opening they have etc and blood trails but now it has to go through like I said the hair the skin a section of meat and now we're at the ribs so expandables using another fellow showed this expandables if you're going through the ribs will have a tendency to they can cut through or go between them if you're shooting at an angle and you come in and hit that rib that's a whole different ball game so now you look at a fixed blade head and this is the black horned sear razor four blade and with the bleeders it doesn't matter if you have a broadside shot or if you get a quartering away shot it is sharp it's going in it's going to be cutting the whole time and it does its thing your arrow is going to stay pretty much the direction you shot it's going to go through that hair the skin the meat and then into your rib cage and then into what is called the kill zone where the lungs and heart and everything are that you're actually trying to get to okay so in summing up when you're out shooting and testing broadheads besides shooting straight on into your target you might want to do some quartering away shots when you're testing those heads to see how they are performing and that's with your expandables a fixed blade broadhead takes out the worry of whether those expandables open because it's fixed blade it's cutting going in with those bleeder blades on this serrator and you're not worrying whether those expandables opened the one thing that I see a lot on YouTube videos fellas testing broadheads 
and the medium that they're using to test them is, in my opinion, is ridiculous. They're shooting cinder blocks. They're shooting through steel doors of automobiles. They're shooting through a steel 55 gallon drum. And they're shooting through plywood. I have yet to see an animal in the woods walking around with any of this stuff covering their body. So I don't know what the purpose is on these videos. They're trying to say, well, this broadhead didn't stand up to the punishment and so forth. I feel they're doing the broadhead manufacturers an injustice. That's not what the broadhead was made for. It wasn't made for shooting through that kind of medium. They're made for shooting through hair, flesh, meat, bones. And if you're taking the hot spot or sweet spot shot on your animals, the most are looking at deer, then you're in that little triangle below the shoulder bone, above the leg, trying to get into the kill zone where the heart and the lungs are. But you have to go be able to go through the hair, the flesh, meat, ribs to get to it. And then you really hope that once you get into the kill zone that you can get back out through the ribs, the meat, the flesh, and the hair for a complete pass through. But with crossbows, a lot of fellows don't concern that. They just feel, well, the speed is going to blow through anything. And they hope the broadhead can withstand the punishment that it's going through, going through that animal. And then if you step up to a bear or elk, you're dealing with larger bones in the ribs. They're thicker, they're heavier in both black bear and elk. And the hair is thicker, the skin is thicker till it reaches some meat and the ribs and then to get into the kill zone. So if you're looking at these larger animals you need to be looking at maybe a different type of head. And also that you have more front of center weight on your arrows to help as the arrows momentum hits that animal that it continues to be pushed through that animal and do the job it's intended to do. Give it some thought. This is for a thinking thought process type of video of maybe what you're using and maybe what you need to look at using. Just because your crossbow shoots 400 feet per second, 450 or whatever, doesn't mean it's going to kill something. This end of the arrow is the one that does the damage. So you want to have everything working for you, for your bow, crossbow. And that goes from the time the arrow is being built, whether you build it or have a shop build them, to make sure everything spins correctly, that it spins correctly and no wobble with a broad head on, whether it's mechanical, or fixed. That all comes into play on how that arrow performs out of that bow or crossbow.
Think about it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it. If you have any comments, questions, leave them in the comment section. Try to respond to them in a timely manner. And hope you enjoyed the video. Talk to you soon. This is Steve with STO Wildlife Call TV.